Oh, every time I uh, turn it to a video, I actually surprise myself when I start it. Every time, even though I'm the one who switched it on. I go, oh, right, it's on. Hello, welcome back. This is the Kaiuso cast from the 28th, check the date, Barry, the 28th of May, uh, 28th of April, 2020. What other date would it possibly be? I'm going to pour myself a bit more coffee as we talk. So uh, every single time we do one of these, um, I give you guys a bit of historical context uh, to try to give you guys the idea of what's what's been happening over the last while, just in case you're watching it in a number of weeks uh, or months or years from now and you're thinking to yourself, why is he talking about that? Because this is an ever evolving situation that we are in um so this is the 28th of april and we are one week to the day away from the potential relaxation of some of the restrictions under which we are living at the moment and um, it seems last weekend some people took that as oh well fuck it you know 10 days away, it may as well be today. And I think there was a lot of social activity, barbecues, things like that over the last weekend, which is very frustrating for someone uh, like me, I guess, who's had to close down a business, had to uh, see his father from like uh, outside the gate of his house and, you know, protect other relatives from uh, potential harm as well you know it makes you want to slap people around to be honest like that's just the the be all and end all but i have to be honest i'm not saying that i'm actually gonna go out and slap people around i'm just telling you that that's what it makes you feel because you don't have the uh, when you're making a lot of sacrifices and then you see other people just going eh i don't buy it really you know i'm just gonna sure what harm can it do if i just have a few people around for a few drinks and uh, we'll have a barbecue and we'll do that uh, it becomes very frustrating, you know, when you think to yourself, like, I'm not sacrificing much. I'm uh, just, like, my living, you know, and uh, <laughs> my, my, my wage. And uh, just, you know, that's all I'm sacrificing. Right? Obviously, I'm not, like, on the front line and I'm not sacrificing uh, my, my, my health. Um, but you're sacrificing quite a lot. So when you see other guys act out there acting like pricks, it, it be, it's very frustrating and it's very difficult to, to kind of, um, very difficult to keep you cool about it. So I hold back, you know. The other thing it's difficult to keep you cool about, mentioned it last week, is those conspiracy theory nuts, you know. Um, and isn't it, isn't it funny that those people... You know, I always say it's, it's really, really funny that, you know, it's cannabis that cures cancer, right? Cannabis. And uh, it's uh, cannabis that's good for anxiety. And it's all... Like, it's, it's basically weed. Weed is good for... I was like, oh, really? It's, it's, how strange. Your exact recreational drug of choice just so happens to cure uh, those illnesses, you know? Isn't that amazing? Like, that it's not, you know, dandelion root or something, you know? That it just so happens to be your recreational drug. So it's almost like you have a skin in the hunt, isn't it? Yeah. And it's the same thing when I look at the conspiracy pots. Like, you know, they're kind of like all the same sort of people who are probably, you know, you know, impacted the most by it, you know, that they've, they've got like a political reason for having it, or they've got like a certain set of beliefs that, that, you know, it, it, it feeds into. It just so happens, you know. Right, I, I didn't mean to start off like that. <laughs> I didn't mean to, I didn't intend that at all, sorry. Um, which, which gives another miserable kind of beginning to, uh, to another, um, to another week. Uh, my apologies, I don't want to go on like this. Um, Okay, let's start with number one. If you were looking at my new magnificent facial hair, it's all right. Try to control yourselves, ladies. Um, I think I mentioned last week I was growing a beard out of a sense of uh, amusement for myself to, to like irritate other people, um, my wife in particular. And then I came down, I'm looking, I'm stroking it over here. There's a little triangle thing here. Um, I came down, I, I shaved a joke, kind of droopy whiskers, like, uh, thing in on uh, Sunday. And I was like, aha. And she was like, oh, it's better than it was before. And I went, 
interesting. Okay, so I came down with this and uh, I didn't meet too many objections actually, oddly enough, but I think I'm going to keep it. Your opinions on a postcard, please. You've got this little thing going on here, a little triangle and this little droopy one. I was going for uh, Ra's al Ghul from the Batman series and uh, I put up a vote. It was like, Ra's al Ghul or do I just look like Chopper Reed? I don't know if Chopper, Chopper. Um, yeah, but I, don't know, I really went for Chopper and it didn't work. So this little thing here, Actually, someone said to me, a little bit here, he was like, why don't you have a soul patch? I'd never heard that term before, soul patch. So if you shave everything else off, I think even if you leave the mustache, would you just leave this bit just under the lip? So go on there, this bit. That's called a soul patch, <laughs> which is the lamest name for a beard ever. So um, there we go. So that's that's my, my beard, which I'm full sure you all tuned in for. Um, the neighbor's tile thing is still ongoing. No change, no point in me even mentioning anything. If you're just looking for that update, no change whatsoever. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's uh, that's our intro is done. Uh, it took me six minutes to talk, to, to whine about people having barbecues and uh, go on about my facial hair. Okay, I better get back on course then, haven't I? Okay, so this week we are talking about um, three things, so I, Three pretty, really good emails. So before we even start, actually, let's get on to a couple of things. Please get in touch uh, if you have anything that you'd like discussed. Um, I'm, I'm interested in hearing from people how they're getting on. I really am. Um, it's very, it's been um, actually a little bit of like a, a, a hobby. <laughs> Um, or a bit, maybe not. Maybe hobby is the bad word. Is a bad word to use. But it's been interesting to me to see how people are getting on and how people are coping and what people are doing um, during the lockdown period. Particularly uh, if you're like me, uh, if you've you've um, lost your job, so you've you've nothing to do for the twenty four hours of the day. So, um, or very little to do, I should say. Yeah, of course, I've got plenty that I can fill my day with, and I got uh, kids here at home to look after as well. So. There's plenty to do in that regard, but I suppose I'm interested in, in to see what your what your your plans are and what, uh, for each day and what uh, what your 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 thoughts are on, on the lockdown. And uh, I've got a couple of contacts on that from that this week. Thank you very much. A couple of uh, things through WhatsApp and um, and a couple of emails. One particular I'll get on to. I've got three things to talk about today. The first one is environment and how you motivate yourself to, to work out at home. Um, I'll go run you through really quickly my training schedule for the week and uh, and we'll talk a little bit about my recommendations on that front. The second thing is about cardio and um, yeah cardio that old word and the final one is about uh, sort of discipline and your mental discipline. Um, so they're all kind of I guess uh, interrelated because they're all kind of uh, surrounding training at home and training during the lockdown. So let's get started. So first up um, so I'm specifically asked about the third place thing. So it was I brought it up in a previous um, uh, podcast that we did, um, and I'll explain it roughly uh, and loosely again here. So third place theory, I think, is is really interesting. So I'm interested in sociology and the idea of of um, and the psychology of training as well, and the psychology of how we uh, change environments and and what makes us. Uh, what makes us train? What makes us do the things that we do that we don't have to do? I find that extremely interesting. What makes people get up in the morning and run marathons? Like what? What? Anybody who's run a marathon will tell you that that's, uh, or anybody even even doctors, you know, sports science will tell you that running a marathon is extraordinarily bad for your health. People die every year running marathons. Every year, it's a deadly, uh, it's a deadly thing to do. It's literally deadly, and um, there's 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 a death from a heart troubled heart problems every year at marathons, uh, at, at most marathons, in fact. So, what makes people do that? Knowing that, what makes people climb Everest? You know, f for shits and giggles. What you know, and what makes us get up out of off our couch? What makes us go to a, a strange gym? And what makes us, you know, get into uh, get onto a mat with other people and, and have them try to strangle us and us try to strangle them? It's an extraordinary thing to do. We don't have to do this. This is a, a the 21st century. We could, you know, have someone pay someone pay someone on Fiverr to do it for us. So, um, the third place theory is 
interrelated with that. So your first place is your home. It's the place where you live and you eat and it's your comfortable, safe spot. The second place is the place where you need to go to make a living. So your work, your work environment, wherever that may be, or if you're a student or, you know, it's your, it's your college. And the, your third place is the place, your optional place, the place you go to make yourself feel better. It's the place you go with your free time, right? So uh, I am a free man after 5 p.m. I can do what I want, go where I want. What am I gonna do with that time? And you choose to do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or karate or football or go to the gym or go to the pub, right? And the third place is very important to us because it's, it's our optional time. It's a place where we socialize and if we find the right place, it's something we might do for a, a long period of time, possibly even for, for the rest of our, our, our lives uh, of which we're capable. So uh, Cuyuzo for me is my third place, even though it's also my second place, right? Makes sense. Um, so training Jiu Jitsu is, is what I do when I, want to, when I want to do something, right? When I have the option to do something. And um, at the moment, we've all lost our third places. So most of us have lost them. We've, we've, we may have lost our jobs, or some of you may be working still. And um, if you're uh, working in retail or wherever it is you're working, or if you're working picking strawberries, um, you uh, may, you haven't luckily, hopefully, lost your home. <laughs> in fact, you may be playing, spending far more time in your first place than you normally do, but you've almost certainly lost your third place. So the problem now becomes, how do you replace that or how do you replicate that? Because you need that to train and you need that to work out. So uh, I told you guys last week that I train in my back garden. I changed my third place from my gym to 20 meters that way. And it's a psychological thing. It's, it's about stepping out of the comfort of my home, putting on my music on my headphones and, and, and training. And I train more effectively. I'm, I certainly am training as effectively as I was uh, in the gym, in the in my other environment, but uh, I'm still training pretty well, actually, to be honest, and I'm actually pretty happy with my training at the moment. Um, now, most people aren't as lucky as me. They can't bring strength equipment home, and they, they, I actually went and collected the raw machine, so I collected the concept too, because I like, I like to row. It's my second favorite sport is rowing, indoor rowing, I guess. So, oh man, I just dribbled a bit of coffee. Um, uh, so for me, what I'm doing, um, I was running, but it's a bit hard on my knees. Um, it's a little bit difficult. Um, my right knee in particular, after my last 5K, I did a pretty decent time for me, about like 26 minutes or something. And it was like, I'd say it was a good 36 hours before my knee really kind of felt like I could do anything on it again. In other words, even just like do like a simple little jog. So it was very sore. And I realized that an injury like that, that just feels sore and painful without restriction is probably just like grinding. It's probably the cartilage has gone to shit. Like it's been taking a lot of abuse over the years between, you know, running on it, playing football on it, and then having people trying to heal hook you. So, it's probably not a good idea for me to run a lot. We, we mentioned that before. Also, I'm like probably about 88 kilos, you know. I'm not like the heaviest I'm, I'm, I've ever been, but I'm pretty pretty heavy, you know. I'm a big guy. So, pow, 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 pow. Pounding that over five kilometers is okay from time to time, but doing it on a regular basis is a, is, a, is probably a no-no for me. Like, it's probably difficult and um, it's probably not good. And I don't really like running anyway. So why would I do something I don't like? So I brought the rowing machine home. Uh, I've done about 20,000 meters in about three days. Um, I, I enjoy rowing. Actually, I really like it. I really like switching off and, and, just, and just pulling. And I think the big part of that is the performance monitor, uh, like seeing your times and seeing your times in real time, your projected finishes, things like that. You know, I think it's a big part of it. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So I row, uh, my plan now, I was, was running twice a week. My plan now is to row three times a week uh, one time along with um, a training session. I want to do one 10,000 meter, uh, one intervals, one set of intervals um, of a thousand meters and one short range, probably like 5,000. And uh, yeah, it's good. I really like it. I really enjoy it. It's good for cardio and it's good for, um, it's good for what, good for what ails me. Uh, other than that, I lift three times a week and actually I'm lifting four times a week. I'm like compressing it. Um, I'm, I'm, I've, I've noticed that I'm, I'm kind of jumping. I've got a, a three session week, but I'm actually like leaking into the next week before I even get around the three. So uh, 
I've got like an upper body push day that I'm using my weighted vest for and my rings and um, a pull day where I'm like doing a lot of pull-ups off my pull-up bar. And I've got like a jumping and a lower body day, which I do with my son uh, and my daughter sometimes joins in as well, where I'm doing like a lot of explosive lower body movements and some squats and things like that. So um, I'm doing quite a lot, but again, it's all taking place. And this is, this is what I want to get through to you. It's about the, that third environment, that other environment to, to, to do it in. And I really don't think that I would do it if I, if I had to do it in my living room. I don't think I'd be as committed. Um, I have tried that before and I don't think it was the same. I, I, I can't really remember, but I, I'm, I'm nearly certain it wasn't the same. So I think getting out, the fact that it's good weather is a good opportunity to do that as well. If you have a balcony, patio, um, or even outdoors, go to the park. Um, I think that's a, a really good thing to do. You know, set your program and decide that you're going to get out and going to go somewhere else. And we spoke with the skin last week. So for me, that's, that's a really good way of doing things. If you don't have that opportunity, so you can't get out of your house or you don't want to, if you're not somebody who likes to work out outdoors, I would say change the environment. So uh, if you can't physically move to another place, change the place that you're in. So if that means pushing the couch back, laying them out on the ground and raising up the music, that could be the equivalent for you of walking up the stairs in the gym, you know, seeing, looking in, walking in and seeing people around you and going, oh, okay, this is, I'm in a training space now. So you need to try and change that. Uh, psychologically speaking, like that's about arousal, right? That's a dirty word, I know, but uh, I'm not talking about the same arousal that you get when you uh, uh, open up your laptop when, you're, when your missus isn't home. I'm talking about the sense of arousal when you're warming up. So arousal is an emotional arousal, arousal right? I probably, yeah, probably made that little 18s there earlier. I'm sorry about that. If you are um, in a physical and emotional state of arousal, you're more likely to train better, right? So that's why, that's why you're, after your warm up and your first couple of rounds of sparring, that's why you're, you're good probably the third or fourth round in. That's probably where you're at your best then. It's because you're, you're up for it. And you need to get up for it to be able to do that. And you can't do that with comfy pillows looking around you and, you know, and your, the throw cushions on the couch. You can't do that, right? Because it's, it's not your body and your mind doesn't associate that environment with hard work or with physical work. So when you walk into your comfy bedroom, you know, with your, you know, the place where you normally sleep, that's a different, difficult for you. It's difficult for you to to change that attitude, you know, it's difficult for you to think of it as a place of, of hard work. So you need to maybe change that. If that's what you are, if that's the only thing you can work with, then you work with what you've got. So bang on the music, push the bed back, do what you got to do, but make sure that you change that and you change that attitude in yourself as well. If you can do that, I think that shows good discipline. Um, second thing somebody was asking me, I said that was the environmental question. Second thing was about cardio and someone was saying they don't like running. I. I'm with you, okay? I don't like running either. Uh, and they don't like, um, they don't particularly like walking either. First of all, walking's great anywhere. It's good for steady state cardio, believe it or not. If you walk briskly, um, it's pretty good um, for fat loss as well. It's probably one of the best fat loss exercises there is, is to try and walk for a sustainable period of time uh, within that sort of 130 to 150 BPM heart rate. It's, it's great. Um, if you don't like cardio, I've got some recommendations for you. Okay, so if you don't like running, first of all, try sprinting. In particular, try hill sprints. Get yourself to a park and run up a hill 15, 20 times and um, with some breaks in between. You might like that a little better and it is probably a little bit better for you than running a 5K. So for the same reason as pounding the pavement. You know, you're not pounding the pavement as much. It tends to be a little less stressful on the joints it certainly tends to be less stressful on the hamstrings than regular sprinting so if you are sort of a power athlete and you're, you're unlikely to blow your hamstring if you're not very fit already right because you're not going fast enough and um, but if you are sort of a power athlete for someone who, who is quite reasonably good at uh, quite reasonably quick at sprinting as it is as is a sprinting up a hill is probably a good deal better for you because the, the hamstring never gets as long and um, it's also probably a little better uh, on your tendons as well right you also don't pound when you're going up so when you're going up, you're more likely to toe strike than heel strike. Boom, and slap the ground. So you'll toe strike and dig into the ground as you go up. So it'll probably be, uh, it is 100% less stressful on the joints and uh, less stressful on an impact point of view. So uh, treat it like interval training. So do your 
do yourself some uh, do yourself a favor and sprint up hills if you don't like that if you don't like running at all and you don't want to be outdoors and all you got is indoors uh try some high, in- high intensity interval training as well which is good for your cardiovascular fitness but try it with like low weights and high reps so you're talking 10 to 15 maybe even 10 to 20 reps uh of uh, of hit work high intensity work um i like short blocks short circuits so things like squat push up pull up simple as that just keep it simple and do that for 10 to 15 minutes um, and again good for your cardio good for your conditioning and um, probably more um more sort of fitting and more functional for grappling training as well than uh, straight up running is okay finally um so we've got like i say a lot of a lot of times when people contact me it's not related to training very much especially during this period because we're not doing any training, I suppose. That might be one of the, the major parts of that. But uh, this week, uh, I got an email from someone, again, I, I'm not gonna identify. Um, uh, and they were actually talking about, first of all, about uh, creating a schedule for themselves and how disciplined they are about getting up and, and deciding that they were going to train a certain way and do certain things. Um, they were talking about, ah, uh, oh, I have to remember the app that they were talking about, that they were using, a bit like Zoom, where they're, using um a couple of mates are they're, they're working out together and they're trying to get they're, they're setting up challenges for each other and things for each other to do and it seems very social and very good um the uh the reason i guess um i like getting emails rather than tweets or whatsapps or communicating on facebook or in comment sections um is it people tend to write a bit better than they would um if they were just like tweeting or because obviously 240 characters isn't isn't, isn't very much to try and uh, convey any sort of uh, any sort of message in uh so uh, tweeting also I'm, I'm just complaining about twitter obviously a little bit but uh I, I mean this about facebook and all that kind of stuff as well um when you tweet it tends to be or, or you put something on facebook it tends to be declarative so essentially there's two types of tweet as far as I can there's, the, there's the, the, the one where you you're asking for something hey can anybody recommend some uh, and then and this is of course outside of things like you put up like family photos or you know you're you're sharing memes or whatever uh, and the second type of tweet is like declarative where it's like uh, this is what I think full stop right and there's no communication in that right so you, you go like Talk about strawberries earlier. Okay, the Keelings workers shouldn't have been flown in. That's the end of my TED talk. Even the humorous ones, right? I still have that full stop out. That's the end of my TED talk. Or uh, what's the other one? That's it. That's the tweet. In other words, argument shut down, discussion shut down. No great social interaction. So for all of its, uh, for all we might call it social media, it's not social at all, right? Because you don't really get to communicate with the other person. You read it after they posted it. You don't really. You don't really care. So longer and more detail is better for me. And I always find emails still still better. Maybe because I'm I'm, I'm a bit, bit old fashioned. I mean, I still write letters to people for fuck's sake. Like I'm not um, I'm not with the 21st century 100% at all. Like so, I still write to people. So if I still write to people, you can better believe I'm gonna enjoy email rather than more than I enjoy text messages, right? So, but anyway, um, so <laughs> to, to move on, just the, 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 to get back to the, the email that I got. So, um. They were just talking a little bit about, um, and again, I'm not going to read it out. But, and maybe, I, maybe I will read it out. I, 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 again, it's going to be very hard for me to edit this, and I hope that the person who sent it to me doesn't really mind me doing this. But uh, I just found it very interesting because I think we we were talking a lot about. Um, oh, actually, I've got my other email account. We were talking a lot last week about, um, you know, how, how, how people are dealing with it emotionally and from a mental perspective. Um, we spoke about like uh, the kind of elements of, of, of mental health that are being impacted by, by this uh, and that there's other tolls, there's another cost to, to like quarantine. There's another cost to the cost of the pandemic um, that isn't just COVID 19s uh, toll. It's also like the, the health of, of, of people who are reliant on care. And um, I suppose we're all like struggling a little, but um, I thought this was quite, quite hopeful. <laughs> this is not like, again, we're not going back to the, the first part of this recording where I was um, speaking miserably, but this is um, 
this is just a, a, a th I thought it was just a, a really interesting email to get and I thought it was something that it was um, a very uh, uh, a very different perspective so uh, I'll we'll, we'll, uh, just get get to the bit uh, that I'm going to read so yeah uh, so he goes in a little bit into his um, uh, diet's been pretty good other than some alcohol and chocolate okay yeah why aren't we all um, good sleep pattern give or take an hour either side I've been pretty consistent um, I'll read it from here and I'll try not to identify the guy now, again I hope you don't mind me reading this out but this is um, this is what you get I guess for sending it to me <laughs> um, I realise I have it extremely handy I'm not sure if it's luck or privilege or even a good thing at all I have no one dependent on me, and, and, and although I lost my job, the COVID payment was more than enough to get me by. Um, on top of that, I'm quite introverted, so the isolation isn't the worst thing. Uh, you and me both. I don't mind isolation too much, I have to say. That hasn't been the problem with me. Uh, my problem, however, is substance abuse issues. So if some people don't want to, or can't exercise, or learn something new, or do whatever, spend, spend, to spend their time during quarantine, it could be a good time to stop doing something they don't want to do. So this is the perspective that I was talking about that's different. So rather than thinking about, oh, you know, I'm going to, you know, learn how to play the guitar or anything like that, that this is actually something where I'm going to, he, he's decided to use this um, as an opportunity to stop doing something bad, which is, a, I thought, a, a really positive way of looking at it. Um, I, 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 it can be daunting to look at a list of things you plan to do and then deflating when you haven't done them. Using my routine as an example, I didn't sit down and plan my quarantine and say, I want to accomplish all this shit while I have the time. It was more a case of, what can I do to take my mind off the bad habit? And now looking at it, I see a routine. So even if it's just a bad fizzy drink habit, some people may find it easier stopping one bad thing than starting 10 new good things. I don't know if it will help everyone, but it may work for some. Um, may, I think that will work for some people. I think that is something that... that um, that people could focus on uh, and obviously you're talking about serious more, a more serious thing than a fizzy drink habit you're talking about a, a substance abuse issue but um i think you know uh, i'll read you that bit again everyone so um if people don't want to or can't exercise or learn something new to do it could be a good time to stop doing something you don't want to do um, you know, it harks me back to the airplane thing, right? I picked the wrong time to stop smoking. And then uh, the next one is like, it looks like I picked the wrong time to stop sniffing glue. Um, but it's, um, it's a, a pretty, I think it's a pretty um, fair play to you anyway for sending the email uh, in the first place. But I think that is a, a, really, uh, a really strong message to try to say, look, yeah, sure, you, you might not be, as I said, learning how to play the trumpet this this period, uh, in this period of time. But perhaps now is the time to uh, focus and, and to focus on something, maybe changing something about your, your life that you don't like, uh, rather than adding something that you think you might like in the future. So I think it's a really positive message. I wanted to read that out. Certainly after being the first uh, the first five minutes of this video were, were so bloody miserable. Um, and I think it's a really brave thing to send me as well. So fair play to you. Um, it's, it's obviously not easy to share. Um, there's a lot of stigma around that subject in particular. Um, I think like for me, uh, I was, I've been speaking to so many people over uh, about this and about how it's affecting them and how it's it's been... Um, how they've been getting through and it seems like I say so trite to kind of talk about when people are literally dying in hospitals and people are you know working 12-hour shifts in emergency rooms and doing all it seems trite to turn around and go oh I'm so bored basically trying to say oh geez I'm nothing to do but of course we've, we've all like been impacted by it in in some form or other but uh, to kind of um, to kind of see like you know the, uh, there's been a lot of I suppose what I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of messages around, look, I'm, I'm trying my best to change this about my life. I'm trying my best to try and keep in shape. I'm trying, and it's all people putting effort in. And I think that's an incredible thing to do. And I think if you're, if you're the sort of person out there who's, who's developing themselves in this, this period of time, uh, or even like I say, if you're not, if you're just focusing on trying to 
um, get by. I think there's a, there's, you know, none of us will take training for granted again. Anyway, let's put it that way. None of us will take like just the simple process of throwing your kimono on and getting on the mat to train. I don't think any of us will take that for granted again. We, we won't because we, I think you've, there's a tendency to think, well, look, it'll always be there next week. Um, you know, if I miss this week, it doesn't matter. It turns out if you missed the last week before training, uh, before this place locked down, it turns out it really fucking did matter, didn't it? It really did matter. If you missed that last Wednesday before we, we, we had to close down, Wow, yeah, really mattered. That Wednesday really mattered. Um, if you missed a month before, wow, that really mattered. Um, so uh, I think, yeah, it's just to come back to the email, I think fair play for sending it. Thank you for everybody who's contacted me, by the way, but in particular that one, um, that it's a, you know, if you can develop good personal discipline in this time, then I think it's definitely going to stand you in good stead in good stead for the future. And uh, good luck with the with the issue, mate. It's uh, I'm 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 fairly certain you're going to lick it with uh, with that attitude. Uh, okay, that's that one. And um, we got five, five minutes left to go. Um, I just want to talk really quickly through a few bits and pieces. Um, the first one was <laughs> this is like embarrassing as well. Someone was asking me for book recommendations, and I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, oh yeah, do them on the on the video like do them on the podcast and i was like what this isn't bbc4 mate that's what i wanted to say this isn't friday evening we're not going to put top of the pops from 1972 on and then do the book recommendations afterwards but we are we're going to do the book recommendations that being said sake right okay it's not embarrassing i'm not, I'm not embarrassed about reading i'm just saying like it's, uh, it's a bit bit a bit of mission creep isn't it like that you know suddenly now i'm, I'm doing books uh, halfway through The Body by Bill Bryson. I recognise I'm around the selfie camera because the other camera won't work for me. Um, the Body by Bill Bryson is one I read recently. I got that for Christmas off the missus, right? It's brilliant. I love Bill Bryson. It's, it's really, it's a lot of fun. They're, they're easy, easy to read and they're very interesting. So that one goes through um, basically all of the human body and its functions and some of the medical history around. So a little bit of history in there as well and a little bit of uh, science for you as well. It's really good, good fun. Um, if they uh, if you're interested in combat sports as well, Andy Lee Fighter um, is brilliant. It's really good. Um, it's an excellent book um, and a very, uh, I suppose, very different view from your traditional sort of sports autobiography. I'm very certainly very different from um, most of the boxing books that I've read. I don't like the style of writing. I'm not like um, I'm not a fan of the style. And if you are somebody who appreciates the elements of style uh, you might not you might be a bit irritated because it's um it's all done in present tense uh, i go down to the stadium and be, meet billy in the office i tell him that i've changed my mind and i'm up front with him about my reasons i don't want to be the guy who ends plays the same you know i don't like that uh, prose but his story's so interesting and so good and he seems like such a good bloke and if you've been listening to him if you if you listen to off the ball he does the boxing coverage on off the ball and he's a very um very good boxing historian i think as well and he's uh, a, an interesting guy uh, Andy Lee, um, he comes from like a gypsy background in, um, gypsy and traveller background, um, so gypsy uh, background, I guess they call it in in, in the UK, um, and to see kind of his career and going over to the Kronk Gym, which is like a gym that I would have been a huge fan of. My favourite boxer when I was growing up was Tommy Herons, um, and the Kronk Gym was kind of was something that I somewhere that I admired and I'd always like to, I always thought I'd love to go and visit it, you know, and um, so to. to that was interesting to me as well to read about that. It's a really good book. Um, and if you're interested in sports, other sports, sorry, The Cost of These Dreams is really good as well by um, Wright Thompson. That's kind of a series of essays. These are just the last four books I read, by the way. Uh, I've, I've read some more, but like fiction and stuff. Um, the Cost of These Dreams is really good. Sports essays. There's a really good one on Michael Jordan and that. It's good stuff about like... Um, Michael Jordan would like it's it's again it's post career it's post Chicago Bulls I know there's a thing out on Netflix at the moment um, so if you're interested in the stuff on Netflix the cost of these dreams is good as well it's got a bit about Jordan as well so has what was his coach's name shit the book is called Five Rings Balls, I can't remember it's downstairs so I'll figure it out it's about the former Chicago Bulls coach as well um, of the, that great team in the 90s it's a really good read as well if you're interested in that Michael Jordan thing as well um Reality is not what it seems. If you're a bit in for a bit more of um, uh, a bit more, you know, uh, brain spinning, um, it's by Carlo Rovelli. Uh, it's uh, about quantum gravity. 
um, which seems like an unusual subject for me, uh, and it is, but uh, it's about um, it's about the makeup of the universe and, and, and what space is made of, and that is, is essentially right. But uh, it's interesting read, and it's actually readable by by normal human beings like me. So I enjoyed that as well. Um, so those those are the book recommendations. So there you go. So if you have any recommendations for me, by the way, please pass them on as well. Um, I won't be doing the rest of the arts show today, so we won't be going into the museums um, to, to, and to look at the latest exhibits. It will just deal with the literary items. Um, that's all we've got time for this week. The final thing I wanted to discuss was the, um, the potential opening dates and stuff like that. Guys, it's not going to be next week, so I know that there's relaxing of restrictions. Um, I had to read through some of the Sport Ireland stuff um, but that was published about... Uh, when they think stuff can come back, uh, there was some talk of easing restrictions on golf, tennis, badminton, things with distance. Uh, and these are all still subject, even those ones are still subject to the um, the stuff from NFEP, which is the, the um, National Public Health Team. And they're all um, talking about, like, I think May is like unrealistic for them as well. Sorry, I'm just pouring myself a little more coffee. I think they're looking more like June. Um, so I think we can talk about the minimum, minimum June. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like out there with this now. And I haven't thought this through. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but fuck it, sure, look, we'll do it anyway. Um, so I was thinking like, if we're returning, I was thinking about like, okay, hand washing, uh, temperature checks that I saw that one today the, the League of Ireland the potential document for starting the, restarting the season in behind closed doors for them in behind closed doors is like sharing like individual showers and not like group showers and um, they, they're going to take their temperature before they they leave to come to training they're going to go on two separate buses to away matches and that's just like squads of 20 or 25 or something like that right uh, and that's to get a national league to continue a national league you know f for 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 important i guess important reasons reasonably important reasons uh, and i suppose I started to think about like how we will come back and i was thinking last week uh, thinking aloud and uh, most days i think about this about small group training and then potentially um expanding those groups as we go um you know training for like five or six hours a day for me like bringing people in in flights uh, and that those groups would never meet. So if you had a group of five people, all training together, four to six, whatever it was, that those groups would never uh, meet the other groups. And I said, but hold on. I thought about it. Said, but they'll meet everybody else. They'll meet their shopkeeper. They'll meet the people in work. So essentially, are you not just saying to people? Because, look, if, if there's four people in a room grappling, training grappling together, and one of those is asymptomatic for COVID. I think you're almost 100% guaranteed that the other three are going to have it by, by the end of that session, right? So, like, what, what, at what point does the risk, I'm just thinking aloud again, as I said, I didn't think about saying this, I'm just thinking aloud, um, ruminating, I suppose, here, aloud. At what point is it, like, incumbent upon us to say no let's stop brazilian jiu-jitsu training for now let's not even think about it let's think about it as a high risk activity for spreading a potentially spreading an infection to other people that it's n not for now it's not for this time period it breaks my heart now i have to say it would it would be a very difficult um decision to make i know there's people out there now i know there's people out there training i know there are Right, and you could say, "Well, look, oh, I'm trying to still do." Me and my buddy are still in there, you know, doing bits and pieces. And I know, I know, and one to two people is different, but it's very different when you're 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 responsible for a whole group of people, and um, which which of course essentially I am, right? As as head coach, right? So I turn around and I say, "Okay, you forty people break into groups of four, and you can train as much as you want." But essentially, then they just say, "Well, okay, it's okay. We had an infection in the in the gym, but it was only contained to four people and their families, so it's all right." Doesn't that sound a bit off? Doesn't it? 
that doesn't sound right to me i don't think i'm comfortable with that so i, I don't know it's the short answer i know a lot of people have been texting when do you think i got a mail right before i got a, a message right before I, I turn on the camera today when do you think we're going to be back well i just don't know i just don't know i wish i did um, and i wish we had more certainty and i really hope that what i am hoping for because i know there's not going to be a vaccine and there probably might be some better treatments like there's going to be a vaccine maybe like down the line but not 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 before um not before like next year and hopefully there'll be a better treatment that allows them to treat people better you know and to get them out of hospital quicker or to 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 make sure that they're safe um, and not overwhelm the health system what i'm hoping for really is that someone turns around and says okay guys we've overreacted i'm hoping for that i don't think it's going to happen but i'm hoping it's like, okay guys we don't it turns out a lot of you are asymptomatic anyway a lot of you have got it and didn't get the symptoms and a lot of you had a very mild flu i had a flu at christmas right really bad one and across clocking through my mind is did i get like an early version of that before we we really knew we had it in the country did i get like an early version of covid before it started to spread and that's like you know that's that's kind of putting up the unknowables at the moment i guess i could get that antibody test when it comes out i don't know again i'm just rambling but i suppose that's what i'm hoping for is that somebody will turn around and say okay guys look it's actually safer than we thought and i think that's the best we can all for it that somebody will turn around and say because look it's actually safer than we thought it's bad but it's not so bad that you need to stop training you need to stop socializing and you need to stop all this so we turns out we can handle it you know if we if we do that um, and a lot of that seems to be able to come down to testing and contact tracing and all that kind of stuff but look we don't know where we're at so the short answer to the final question today is i don't know when we're back training i hope it's soon um but it's not going to be soon i know in my heart of hearts it's not going to be soon and uh, we've got a lot to think of uh, a lot of hand wringing to do before we can really figure out what that will look like when we're back what will the new normal be if we're being told to wear masks on public transport, which they're being told to do in Belgium, it seems a little unusual that we're going to be given carte blanche to grapple each other in large groups. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case. Okay, and on that note, we started off a little bit miserable. We've ended a little bit miserable. I didn't intend it that way my apologies uh were were I, i'm i think i'm rambling more and more every week worse than that i say okay just you know we got five minutes to go and 10 minutes later i'm still talking all right listen uh hopefully we'll be back next week with more news um if if you want us to continue please give us a subscribe like share i don't give a shit what you do to be honest and um, whether you like or share it or anything like that anymore i always say ah but do subscribe right if you want to share it and you want to pass around that's fine by me um it's uh it's again it's just a, a series of videos not to to be um not for uh not necessarily for like public consumption or anything like that. just to keep in touch and just to keep everybody uh in communication uh, and to give me an opportunity to try and uh, to let you guys give you guys some tips and hints on how to train at home and how to keep yourself active and moving and of course uh for us to kind of communicate on some level other than that um it's it's uh it's also a, a bit of fun i hope as well okay and um, if you're interested guys uh please mail me i'll put those the names of those books maybe um uh, in in it in a in the com and the uh, description down below words fell off there for a second other than that i will see you soon hopefully um sooner than you think and uh i'm gonna try to chat to a couple like i said of uh, people of uh from the jiu-jitsu community in the next week for the zoom things that i was doing and uh i'll get those out please watch the robert drysdale one which is the last video i posted on the youtube channel here um, and uh, that's it okay for another tuesday i'm out i'll talk to you really really soon